faculty, staff, administration, alumni, family, and friends. Welcome to the 2021 Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University Showcase. This evening we have two great gentlemen and three wonderful ladies vying for the coveted titles of Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University for the 2021 to 2022 school year. I am Kyra Purvis, a native of Salisbury, Maryland. I'm a mass communication student with aspirations of being a news reporter. I am so delighted to be your hostess for this evening. The selection process for Mr. and Miss ECSU shall consist of a student election and a judge showcase. The candidates with the highest combined score, student votes being 30%, with a judge's score of 70%, will become Mr. and Miss ECSU. The showcase for Mr. and Miss ECSU shall be held before elections. Contestants will compete in interview, oratory, talent, evening wear, and onstage question. A panel of well-qualified judges from an array of different backgrounds will judge each contestant. Mr. and Miss ECSU will be selected based on the following criteria. Interview, 25%. Oratory, 25%. Talent, 25%. Evening, 10%, and onstage question, 15%. It is my honor to now recognize our esteemed panel of judges. Firstly, Mr. Corey Bradford, 
Corey J. Bradford is a 22-year-old native of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Since graduating Northeastern High School, he has gone on to study musical theater at the American Musical Dramatic Academy in New York City, thus initiating his start in the professional world as a performer with the Disney Cruise Line, where he has portrayed many well-known characters like Simba and Kristoff. Corey is now partnered with TikTok and Instagram in bringing up the next generation of black artists and creatives. He is honored to take part in ECSU's long-standing history and tradition. Next as our judges, we have Ms. Fatima Faison. Ms. Fatima Faison is an Elizabeth City State University alum who graduated in the spring of 2008 with a bachelor's in English. After graduating, Mrs. Faison began her career at a local high school where she teaches English language arts and is a cheerleading coach. Mrs. Faison is a proud wife of mother and mother of three very smart, intuitive, and beautiful girls. She considers herself very blessed and gives God all the glory. Last but not least, we have Miss Angie Wills. Angie Wills, a native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, holds an undergraduate degree in business administration from Elizabeth City State University and an MBA from Regent University. She has many years of experience in an organizational change and development, small business development, and fund and grant management. Currently, she is the business officer with the Division of Student Affairs here at ECSU. It is now time for the oratory competition. The contestants will deliver a, deliver a memorized three-minute speech on the following topic, the HBCU effect, the weight and gravity of our reach. Speeches must be delivered within two minutes and 30 seconds and three minutes. One point will be deducted for each 10 seconds the contestant is under or over this time frame. Viking, please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Damon Rawlinson. My C in front of my U. I love my HBCU. That's a chant I never fully understood until I enrolled in a historically black university. I've always pictured my college experience being something out of the movies, maybe like Stomp the Yard or Drumline. I imagine myself smooth talking the girl finessing my degree with countless hours in the library. Where I established lifelong connections and network with the best and brightest minds on campus. I pictured the bands playing that good old flight of the bumblebee. I pictured the alumni at homecoming drip from head to toe with spirit. And the black culture that seamlessly brought it all together, creating such a welcoming atmosphere for all those of varying skin complexions and mixtures of beautiful shades of black and brown. This mental image is celebrated with glitz and glam, but don't let the imagery downplay the true HBCU effect. I've heard discreditors of predominantly black institutions state they are nothing more than an escape from reality. I've heard that they're not an actual reflection of the real world. I've even heard that the HBCUs are a paradise vacation created from black society that doesn't actually level up and prepare their graduates for the world outside of academia. Opponents of the universities, of these universities, fail to realize the true value and importance of the roles that HBCUs play in the advancement of black education in America. HBCUs are the catalyst for change because it's on these campuses where students are challenged to, to be both students and socially conscious of their own identities being affirmed. 
though they grew out of necessity and in response to a history of inequality and a lack of access to public education, they remain to be a linchpin of the black community, educating the future black lawyers, doctors, teachers, and pilots of the world. We will have Ms. Tiana Boyce. When I think of the beautiful,
We are brilliant, we are original, and we live life with determination. We are bold. Next to the stage, Miss Asia Jones. The weight and gravity of our reach. When given this topic, I wanted every word to follow each other so perfectly that you would think I did actual research. Although I did a little, I would like to share my personal experiences coming to an HBCU and why it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Being an African-American woman, graduating high school, and entering adulthood, I needed a warm environment. So why not a HBCU? According to New York Times, students of color perform better in environments where they feel safe and supported. And honestly, nothing felt more like home than being surrounded with people who look exactly like me. Being a student athlete here at this illustrious HBCU has allowed me to create solid relationships with not only my teammates, but the rest of the student body, faculty, and administration. These relationships that I've created has also added to the culture that all HBCUs present, whether it's fried chicken Wednesdays, swag surfing at school events, or even just saying Viking Pride three times. I would like to believe that HBCUs have a huge impact on the black community. These universities and colleges provide a nurturing essence to all students, but especially to those of low income and first generation students. The stigma around HBCU education is that the degree obtained by an HBCU isn't respected or equivalent to the degree obtained by a PWI. Yet, here we are in 2021 with our first African-American woman and Howard graduate in the White House serving as our vice president. Talk about the weight and gravity of our reach, right? For us, this is not just a lifetime, this is not just a four-year experience. It's a lifetime affair of love and family. And I'm so happy to call this my home. Thank you. Next to the stage, Ms. Diamond Rawlinson. It's gonna be alright. In 1837, Richard Humphreys established the first historically black college and university, Cheney University of Pennsylvania, thus paving the way for 106 other black institutions to be discovered. Every day, I get reminded of prestigious HBCU graduates, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Thurgood Marshall, that were in leadership positions that advocated for the advancement of individuals like me by preparing me for lifetime success and career achievement. By going to a great historically black university, it gave me a chance to witness so many beautiful, melanated individuals who will one day make a difference. The reach of the gravity of the HBCU experience
can be defined by the exposure you get to cultural education, to cultural and educational excellency. Elizabeth City State University has given me qualities and opportunities I would not have got anywhere else. Elizabeth City State University has gave me a greater passion to serve, learn, and become a better me. Going to an HBCU changed my life. The person I became is completely different from the person I was when I first started. We have to uplift and help each other when it comes to our HBCUs. I challenge you to make a difference in your community and to make sure that our HBCUs remain strong and resilient. Next to the stage, Mr. Joshua Cox. Greetings, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Joshua Cox your chief flight attendant. On behalf of Captain Terry Dixon and the entire crew here at Elizabeth City State University, welcome aboard Viking Airlines Flight 1891. This flight has a nonstop service from your current situation to graduation and continuous services to entrepreneurship, graduate school, or president of the boardroom. Make sure that you fasten your seatbelts as we take this magnificent ride to ECSU. It may have a little bump from time to time, but, every, but know that everything comes at a great way. We'll be flying at a high altitude at no limit and a ground speed of catch me if you can. At this time, make sure that your seat backs and your table trays are in their full upright position. You must have your cell phones on study mode until the announcement is made upon arrival. This ensures that adequate learning and also have a accessibility to a quality education. This is the HBCU effect, the weight and gravity of our reach. During this flight, make sure that you are as comfortable as possible. We'll be serving cups of confidence, loads of learning, and a heart-filled heritage of many, many pieces of pride. But have no doubt about it, the HBCU effect serves as a mixing bowl of innovation through education, social engagement, and service learning. Of course, it's playground has friendly competition through athletics, campus royalty, and not, and not to forget our high step and marching band. This is the snapshot of our regards of the weight and gravity of our reach of the HBCU. Wow, these contestants are really giving it their all. Shortly, we are gonna give Miss Tiana Boyce the opportunity to repeat her speech due to the loss of sound. The judges will keep their current scores for this speech and for her past oratory presentation. There was sound in the house, there was no sound through camera. I'm so excited to see what the rest of the contestants have for us today. We are definitely giving our judges plenty of time. Yeah. 
All right, back to the stage for her repeat of her oratory presentation, Miss Tiana Boyce. When I think of the beautiful, intricate, illustrious, historically black colleges and universities, one word comes to mind, culture. Culture being the behaviors, beliefs, objects, and characteristics shared by groups of people. From the first HBCU, Cheney University being founded on February 25th, 1837, to the year 2021, marking the celebration of 130 years of excellence and resilience that is Elizabeth City State University. Those from centuries before us fought to establish the diverse, ever-changing culture that we have come to know and love today. And if I may borrow a line from the Cheers theme song, don't you want to go where everybody knows your name? Greetings, administration, faculty, and staff. I am the one and only Tiana Boyce. And I aspire to be the 87th Miss Elizabeth City State University. From watching the movie Drumline as an adolescent to attending the annual Women in Math conferences hosted right here at ECSU, I knew HBCUs created once in a lifetime opportunities that had lifelong impacts that have been passed down from generation to generation worldwide. The welcoming and family-oriented culture causes people to thrive and manifest their goals and wildest dreams. The culture allows individuals of any race, ethnicity, religion, or background to come together collectively and embrace their individuality. HBCUs are one of the many reasons people blossom. For example, I know several ECSU alumni that have blossomed and made their mark, but there is one in particular I would like to mention, Miss Tawana Walton. Miss Walton attended ECSU from 2006 to 2010, where she received her bachelor's degree in mathematics. She now holds her doctoral degree, which she received from ODU. She has interned with NASA numerous times, but in 2015, she interned in California she interned in California for NASA's largest armed project, the Tilt Rotor Test, which was a $30 million project. She has even come back here to speak at one of the women in math competitions. I have one more interesting fact about Ms. Walton. She is my aunt. The faculty and staff here encouraged her to go after any and everything she desired so that her name held weight and she could inspire others all over the world and make her mark. This day and time, HBCU stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ivy League colleges. There are absolutely no limits, no limits to the worldwide impact that we have because we provide a place where students can obtain a world-class education in an environment that allows their cultural identity to flourish. We have birth a vice president of the United States. We have birthed the first black NFL woman referee. We are the trendsetters and the trend changers. We are the creatives and the innovators. We are brilliant, we are original, and we live life with determination. We are bold. That was an amazing oratory segment. I am so excited to begin the talent competition. As a reminder, all candidates were tested for COVID-19 today prior to this evening's showcase, so they are not wearing masks during this part of the competition. For the talent competition, each contestant will have the opportunity to present a unique talent of their choosing that showcases their abilities. Time limit for performances will be no less than two minutes and no more than five minutes. One point will be deducted for each 10 seconds the contestant is under or over this time frame. 
Time of performance begins when the contestant steps on the stage and ends when the contestant leaves off the stage. Vikings, please help me welcome contestant number one, Mr. Damon Rawlinson. Mr. Damon Rawlinson will wow us with his magical talents as he performs a card trick that involves a volunteer selecting a series of cards and reinserting them into the deck at random. The selected cards shall magically reappear at a specific place on the deck at Mr. Rawlinson command. Damon, the stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great inviting Vikings. Tonight, you're in for magic and illusion. I'm gonna have a volunteer come up and help me on stage. All right, for this trick, I'm gonna have my lovely volunteer, Tati, pick out three cards at random from this deck and she's gonna put her signature on every single one of those three cards. Here you go. You can use whatever one you want. I will not look at the cards, and after she's done signing, she will show them to the judges. Have you chosen your cards yet, Tati? All right, can you show them to the judge? Go around. I'm not going to look at them. While you're doing that, I'm going to put out four stacks of cards and different amount of cards. And my job is to trick you up. And your job is to trick me up. At the end, I'm going to have you place your cards at random in each spot. And at the end of my trick, all three of your signature cards will be back together. That sounds simple enough for you. Just to let the viewers know the cards that we do have, we have the nine of diamonds, the six of diamonds, and the seven of clubs. Those are your signatures. On the front of the card, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ready for the trick to begin? All right. I need you to take one of your cards and place it on the top of the stack one for me. Thank you, Tati. And can you put, can you cut stack number two as many cards as you want and place that on stack number one? And okay. Can you put this card down right here for me? Face down on the sack. All right, now can you take as many cards out of this deck and put it on here? And repeat that last step for me, and I'm gonna handle the last step. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put the stack of cards on top of each other. And Tati, this is what we're gonna do. We're going to play a game of up-down, all right? And if you see your card face up, I want you to start, say stop, yell it, all right? Face up, all right? Up, down, 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 up, down. 
yeah, uh, yeah. You see your card. All right. You didn't see it at all on this deck. All right, we're going to play it again. We're going to play it again, up, down. Stop me when you see any of, any of three of your cards. You can see that up. All right, let's try this one more time. We're going to play down, up. All right. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You can see any of your cards. One more time, one more time, one more time. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. Up. None of your cards. Reveal these cards to the judges for me. Are those your cards? Yes. With your exact signature. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rawlinson, for that magnificent magic trick. We are now going to have a few words for our 2020 to 2021 Mr. Elizabeth City State University, Nomar. How are you doing today, Nomar? Good. How about yourself, Claver? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to be here with all of these contestants. So I wanted to ask you, how has your time as Mr. ECSU been so far with this pandemic and life in COVID? How has it been? Well, honestly... It's been great. You know, with the pandemic going on, we all have faced hardships and challenges throughout these times. But I believe that it's times like this where it's time for us to come up and rise, you know, and overcome what's, what we're presented with. So I've definitely had a great time and experience with my royal court and my Viking family. That's great. That is great. So what do you see for yourself in the future after Mr. ECSU? This is a great opportunity. I know that you are growing as this, this character and this leader on campus. What do you see after Mr. ECSU? Thank you. After Mr. ECSU, I plan to graduate. I plan to go to Office of Candidate School for the United States Coast Guard. And after that, I'll go to flight school to become a helicopter pilot for the service. Wow, this is our Mr. ECSU, everybody. This is Viking Pride right here in the making. <laughs> Last question, um, just... How do you feel about today, about this process, the contestants? What good luck would you be able to say to the next Mr. ECSU, the next Miss ECSU following your footsteps? What words would you say to them right now? For the upcoming Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University contestants, I will tell them, regardless of what comes your way, just know that you're bigger than whatever it is. Always keep your head forward and always overcome the challenges that you are presented with because life is nothing but challenges that you are going to face with and it's up to you to remain mentally resilient to overcome them. Again, our Mr. ECSU, everybody. Still waiting just a little bit, so I'm going to keep asking no more a couple questions while we're waiting up here. So I know you said that your uh, army... Um, Coast Guard. Coast Guard, Coast Guard. So well, what is that like, kind of getting off track with the mister, but what is that Coast Guard life like? Explain that a little bit. Well, I can tell you about the best branch of the military. Um, the United States Coast Guard was founded August 5th, 1891. Or excuse me, 1791, I'm sorry. And we have about 10, 11 different missions that we uh, carry out. 
mostly we're a maritime going service, so we like to go out to sea just like the Navy, but we more so protect the homeland and the borders around there and catch drug smugglers, um, migrants, um, enforce laws on fishing vessels, and so on. So we're a pretty extensive branch, and we like to work excuse me, hand in hand with our other branches. Wow, that is just really amazing. Thank you so much for talking to me today. And we're going to get back to the talent competition, all right? Next to the stage, we will have Ms. Tiana Boyce. Tonight, Ms. Tiana Boyce will showcase her skills as a vocalist with a soulful rendition of Diamonds by Rihanna. This entrancing and inspiring selection is close to Tiana's heart as she believes greatness resides in each student at ECSU. Through this selection, Tiana seeks to inspire her peers to shine as only Vikings can do. Take it away, Tiana. Shine bright like a diamond, and shine bright like a diamond, shine bright like a diamond. Oh, find light in the beautiful sea. I choose to be happy. You and I, you and I, we're like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star, I see a vision of ecstasy when you hold me. I'm alive, we're like diamonds in the sky. I knew that we'd become one right away. Oh, right away. At first sight, I felt the energy of sun rays. I saw the light inside your eyes. You and I, yeah. we're beautiful like diamonds in the sky. Oh, shine bright like a diamond, shine, shine bright like a diamond, shine bright like a diamond. Whoa, shine bright like a diamond. 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 Oh, 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 Shine bright like a diamond. Thank you, Miss Tiana, for your beautiful rendition of the song Diamonds by Rihanna. Next to the stage, we will have Miss Asia Jones. Tonight, Asia will be performing an original descriptive monologue highlighting how judgments kill love and society through the perspective of a misunderstood young man. This gentleman wrestles with being judged and losing his lover because of the judgment from outsiders. Asia enjoys writing monologues, storylines, and poems as she believes that writing is the key to unlocking the power of the creative and expressive mind. I now present Miss Asia Jones. Sir or madam, I want to begin by saying I'm so sorry and embarrassed to even be writing this letter of plea and understanding. To know me is to love me. When I was in fifth grade, I participated in a talent show. In the talent show, I did ballet. It was art. I loved art. I remember the judges looking at me with confusion while the audience's faces resembled theirs. Staring into the crowd of 109 full seats, it felt lonely. Even after the talent show, a group of kids surrounded me and laughed at me because I was strange. And boys weren't supposed to wear pink, let alone doing ballet. I 
I wasn't very different from the other fifth grade boys, I thought, who enjoyed monster trucks and getting dirty. I'm, I mean, okay. Maybe I didn't like getting dirty and I wasn't into sports. Is dancing a sport? I remember wearing the prettiest tutu. My aunt made it from scratch. She never judged me. She loved me for numerous reasons. She loved me for being me. And that was the only thing I was ever able to do right. And even then, it still felt wrong. I'm sorry in advance. I was called homosexual, gay, when I preferred Henry, Henry Williams. I was 26 years old. I was a grad student who majored in performing arts. It's so gay, I know. I hear it all the time. I wanted to be a dancer. Everyone has a way of expressing their feelings and telling their story, and mine was dance. And so was his. I met the love of my life in one of my classes. His name was Connor, Connor Macklin. He was such a fox. He was 23 who loved long walks. His favorite color was blue, the blue you see when you're outside and the day is warm. Oh, I loved him so much. But he was scared to love me out loud because of the society we live in. So judgmental and heartless. <laughs> Oh, that's not going to work. He received so much hate because he was in love with another man. I mean, I received it too. I learned how to ignore it and keep on trucking. I was strong enough for the both of us, even when I felt weak. I mean, I would walk with him sometimes, and we would hear the side comments with the looks of disgust. Like, we gagged him with a spoon. It was like gnats. Could you imagine stepping foot outside like it was summer, and it was gnats just attacking you? Nah. How could you? Because if you're reading this, you're probably normal. You aren't strange. Anyways, this letter isn't about you. You know, he was planning to leave me. He was really planning to leave me. How, how could you leave me? I was strong for both of us. The bone that protects the heart is the rib, and I was his. <sighs> Why couldn't you just hang in there with me? I was everything you needed me to be. I was there. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I took my damp hands with fresh tears as I watched him sleep and firmly grasped, grabbed his neck. One blink and the thunderstorm from my, eye, my eyes showered his lifeless body. I'm so sorry. Thank you for that powerful presentation, Miss Asia. Next to the stage, we will have Ms. Diamond Rawlinson. This evening, Ms. Diamond Rawlinson will be performing a powerful rendition of Can't Give Up Now by Mary Mary. This song has encouraged Diamond to persevere through many challenges and has sustained her faith. Diamond hopes to inspire her Viking family that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Don't give up. The change you need is on its way. Expect to win 
if I never try, oh, 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 I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, and I don't believe he's brought me this far to be free. Never said there wouldn't be trials, never said I wouldn't fall, never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel the hope is gone, I'll just lift my head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started. Nobody told me that the road would be easy And I don't believe he's brought me this far to be free And I don't believe he's brought me this far to be free And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Thank you so much, Diamond Rawlinson, for your rendition of that song. That was amazing. Next to the stage, we will have Mr. Joshua Cox. On tonight, through a dramatic monologue, Mr. Joshua Cox will transform into a homeless man who shares his story of defeat and judgment. We never know what someone else is going through, so we should never judge. We haven't walked a mile in anyone else's shoes, so we should never tell their story. Go on a journey with Joshua and learn why you don't live on my street. I'm always high and why you never ever see me cry so how can you look at me with such conceit when I can't even feel defeat so how am I supposed to concentrate when I can't remember the last time I ate but you don't know a thing about me Why you see me in defeat? When I go up on the side, never sing when I came right by. When you see me when I'm never eight, people hit me, and I was never great. Until you walked in my shoes for a while, I never, ever, ever will be ever again for a while. Until you have walked my walk, until you have talked my talk, until you have seen my life through my eyes, you can see me go through all of my demise. Until you have been with me, my life was not as good 
have to see. But know this, you do not live on my street. Thank you, Mr. Cox, for that dramatic monologue. At this time, we will have our official intermission from the Miss ECSU and Mr. ECSU competition. We have a special treat for you this evening. We will now have the official debate for our candidate for student body president. Please help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Jimmy Chambers, candidate for student body president. Ms. Tatiana Keo, Vice President for Internal Affairs, will facilitate this portion of the competition. Good evening, everyone. I would like to turn your attention over to the presidential speech and interview segment. Mr. Chambers, the stage is now yours. As we wait for the presidential debate speech, I would like to talk about how great this competition has been going so far. We have multiple candidates racing for the Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University position. We will now hear from our current and running student body president, Mr. Jimmy Chambers. In the words of former President Barack Obama, it takes ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Greetings, I am Jimmy Chambers Jr., a criminal justice and homeland student from Indian Trail, North Carolina, and I, striving to serve as our Student Government Association President once again. I remember when I first began my journey to become a student leadership. On March 29th of 2019, I walked around in Bedell Hall and asked students, what? would you love to see on this campus? Many students voiced their opinions were, they would love to see more discounts here in Elizabeth City for our students. That whole entire year, I worked so hard and was able to get seven food vendors to offer discounts to our students. I believe in Elizabeth City State University. My main focuses would be advocating for Elizabeth City State University on a state level to make sure that we have equal opportunities and resources as other universities in our UNC system. I will also partner with institutional advancement to make more resources available for our students. But most importantly, I will continue to advocate for our students to make sure that our collegiate experience are more enhanced. It's not about power, it's all about impact resounding the impact in our ECSU community, making Elizabeth City State University an even greater first class and premier institution. Thank you for that wonderful speech. Now we'll be moving on to the interview questions. What is the significance of the student body president? Can you say that one more time? What is the significance of the student body president? The student body president role is to be the voice of the student to administration, to work alongside administration, to enhance the collegiate experience, fix the issues of the student, to be the student's voices in meetings with administration. Being that you are running unopposed, what is something you wish you did during your term? One thing, that I learned about this current year is to be more relaxed. When I am presented with a, a project, I seem to give my full time and support to it, but I 
I just I I give it so much time that I just don't don't make enough time for myself, and I I need to work on that. How has COVID-19 changed the course of the school and in what ways will you reroute the course to fit the new student experience? The current freshmen haven't seen everything that Elizabeth City State University has to offer. And I believe that with everything we learned this year, I believe that we will be able to get back to some form of normalcy next year. And I plan to work with the administration on that. Thank you, Mr. Chambers. Thank you, Ms. Hill. And this now concludes our segment. That was a powerful speech by a great student leader. Thank you for all you have done on the campus of ECSU thus far. We are confident that you will go on to do great things for the student body. We wish you well in Friday's election. With that, it is time to resume the Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University Showcase. We will now have the evening wear competition. The contestant's poise and projection is highly important during the evening wear competition. Each contestant will be attired in their formal wear of choice, representing their personal taste, style, color, and design. They will be evaluated on the poise, appearance, and grace. The contestant should appear regal, natural, elegant, and display grace and charm. Without further delay, let's start the evening wear competition. Vikings, please help me welcome contestant number one, Mr. Damon Rawlinson. Damon Rawlinson Jr. is a junior majoring in aviation sciences with a concentration in professional aeronautics. He hails from the great city of Raleigh, North Carolina. During his collegiate years, he served in various capacities and organizations on campus. Damon is a collegiate pre-commissioning scholarship recipient and has served as Mr. Sophomore for the 2019 to 2020 year. He has also served as a Viking voyage leader resident assistant, honors program member. He is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated and is a fall 19 initiate of the Epsilon Alpha Chapter. He is an active duty member of the United States Coast Guard. Running on the platform Manifest, Damon challenges Vikings to become the change agent on this campus. He encourages students to speak life to their visions and to their aspirations. Thank you, Mr. Rawlinson. Next to the stage, we will have contestant number two, Miss Tiana Boyce. Tiana is a current junior business administration student with a concentration in marketing from Gates County, North Carolina. She is actively involved in numerous clubs on campus, such as the Honors Program, Vike New Models Incorporated, the National Society of Leadership and Success, CAB, ECSU School of Business, the Dean's Advisory Board, Sister to Sister, and ECSU Student Leaders. Tiana loves to volunteer and impact others in the most positive way as possible. Her platform, Be Bold, is meant to inspire people worldwide to be brilliant, original, and live life with determination. Thank you, Miss Boyce. Next to the stage, we will have contestant number three, Miss Asia Jones. Asia Jones is a rising senior hailing from Rocky Mount, North Carolina. She is a member of the ECSU volleyball and bowling teams and is a proud member of the Delta Theta chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Asia enjoys reading, writing, making people laugh, and spending time with family. 
She is a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. After graduating from ECSU, Asia intends to become an English or writing teacher for high school students, publish her own books, and own her own daycare. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Next to the stage, we will have contestant number four, Miss Diamond Rawlinson. Diamond is a rising junior pursuing a degree in early childhood education. Hailing from Raleigh, North Carolina, she has served as a member of the Campus Activity Board and the National Council of Negro Women. She has also served as a Viking voyage leader, Miss Freshman, and Miss Sophomore. She is humbly vying to work and serve as your 87th Miss Elizabeth City State University. Running on the platform, fear, face everything and rise, she believes fear has two meanings, forget everything and run or face everything and rise. The choice is yours. Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. She is dedicated to be the change she wants to see, put actions behind the words that she speaks and influence all individuals that come after her. Thank you, Ms. Rawlinson. Last to the stage, we will have contestant number five, Mr. Joshua Cox. Joshua Cox is from Fayetteville, North Carolina. He is a junior studying biology. Joshua is active on campus and within the local community. He consistently volunteers for the food bank and serves as a volunteer and me mentor at the Elizabeth City Boys and Girls Club. He is a sergeant first class in the ECSU Army ROTC program. In addition, Joshua serves as the vice president of the campus activity board. His platform is PUSH, in which he demonstrated by leading and participating in several events relating to Black Lives Matter and the 2020 presidential election. Mr. Cox aspires to become a pediatrician. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Wow. That attire was Hollywood worthy. Let's get ready to welcome our candidates back to the stage for the last time. The last phase of competition this evening will be the onstage question. Each candidate will pick a number between one and 10 and I will read the corresponding questions. Candidates may ask for their question to be repeated once and will have one minute to answer. Please note that all candidates were tested for COVID-19 today prior to this evening's showcase, so they are not wearing masks during this portion of the competition. Don't they look lovely tonight, Vikings? As we're gearing up for this last phase of our competition, the onstage question, we want to recap on what we did so far. We started off with the oratorical competition, which then followed with the talent competition. After the talent competition, we then moved in to the evening gown, and we are now at the onstage question. Without further delay, let's begin the on-stage question competition. Contestant number one, Mr. Damon Rawlinson, please pick a number between one and 10. Six. What is one of the biggest tasks that our campus faces right now, aside from COVID-19? How would you tackle this issue? I believe one of the most 
vital and necessary task we need to accomplish on this university is preparing students for after graduation. I believe we should have financial literacy workshops for students, because we're going to get that money. We're going to get that degree. And we need to know how to be able to handle finances after we graduate and move on from this uh, illustrious university. Thank you for that response, Mr. Rawlinson. Contestant number two, Ms. Tiana Boyce, please pick a number between one and 10. Four. Being that the world shut down, what new ideas would you implement moving forward while mitigating the spread of COVID-19? Moving forward, I would try to implement, no, I would implement events for the students on campus to still socially interact, but at a distance so they're not as limited as they are right now due to our circumstances being in the pandemic. I would encourage them to participate in the virtual events that we do have so that they can still get to know others and do so safely. Thank you for that answer, Ms. Boyce. Contestant number three, Ms. Asia Jones, please pick a number between one and 10. Nine. What in your life are you most grateful for? Right now, I am most grateful for being COVID free and I'm also grateful for having a supportive family. Thank you for that answer, Ms. Jones. Contestant number four, Ms. Diamond Rawlinson, please pick a number between one and 10. Five. What is your opinion on social media? Has it been beneficial to society? Why or why not? I believe that social media has been very beneficial, but at the same time, it can tear down people in um, many ways. I believe that we need to use social media for the correct way in by, making, by being positive. Thank you for that answer, Ms. Rawlinson. Last but not least, contestant number five, Mr. Joshua Cox. Please pick a number between one and 10. Seven. What is your favorite quote and why? Well, my favorite quote by Mahatma Gandhi is, do everything that's right and also try to live life with no stress for you. Don't be stressful. And when he says that, I think of life as it's very precious, but at the same time, you have to understand that you only get one chance in life and you have to live to the best of your ability. Thank you for that response, Mr. Cox. Thank you, candidates. We have reached the end of our showcase. Vikings, please remember voting will take place March 12th, this Friday at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Students, please be sure to download the app Vikings Engage if you haven't and vote for the candidate you believe will best serve our student body. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for virtually attending the 2021 Mr. and Miss Elizabeth City State University Showcase. Have a great night in Viking pride. Thank you.